Hey, it's Dr. Berg again. In this video, we're going to talk uh, about a, a new topic, uh, GMO. Basically, I have a, a client here who's a farmer who actually knows a lot about it because on his farm, he actually did uh, soy and corn GMO. So I'm glad that you're here. And I just have some questions. Um, like you've done it, so we, you've been in the, that area and you're looking to transition uh, into organic farming, okay. and you know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first question is, are there a lot of farmers in the Midwest, because you're from Illinois, uh, kind of um, doing um, GMO? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say probably in my area, and I'll be conservative, but at least 75%. It's probably higher than that. Wow. The vast majority. And uh, don't mind the microphone, because there are other mic it's broken, so we're just going to go back and forth. Sorry, you can um, I'll just lean in. Okay, good. And then, um, so what's the like the motivation? I know it's probably, I'm not saying laziness, but is it, probably, is it a little bit more work to do organic? Yeah, uh, definitely more work. Um, you can cover a larger area, more a, a higher volume of acres doing the commercial. Um, and so... There, there is more work involved because it's more of a mechanical approach with mm -hmm. the organics. Wow. Now, GMO is genetically modified organisms where they will uh, take a plant and they'll take some other, they could take a virus from something or an animal gene and splice them together. I'm not sure exactly what they do with um, the corn or the soy, mm -hmm. but I knew, do know that when they modify it, it becomes resistant to an herbicide. So corn is now resistant. And they also modify it for another reason too, I think um, it almost acts as a certain pesticide, doesn't it? Corn. Yeah, definitely. Um, as as far as I'm aware, there's corn borer and rootworm, which the the species actually has to feed on the plant. But when when it does eat the plant, it it kills it kills the insect. So, but there's no harm to humans. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, what about? Um, if you use genetically modified corn, uh, you're able to use Roundup Ready or that spray, and that is a weed killer. And so the the plant thrives better, right? And that's what they do, they spray it. Yeah. Um, but what about um, the soil itself? Like, um, tell me a little bit about, do you put a lot of minerals in? What kind of minerals do you put back in the soil? Uh, we focus solely on N, P, and K, so nitrogen potassium and phosphorus okay. but uh, that's pretty much the limitation there wow so we don't really so because I've never farmed but they don't really put all the minerals back in right like all the trace minerals you have like 94 minerals they don't put those back in no no just those three is all we focus on in commercial wow so like iodine you're just gonna I mean like people eat that food they're just gonna be deficient in iodine zinc selenium boron, manganese, all these things. Man, that's amazing. So they just, so that's why you, you need, you know, you need to enhance, like people say, well, you don't really need vitamins. Well, you're going to have to enhance something. Um, so the other question I have is, so they're doing all the soy out of the viewpoint that our world is starving, right? And um, tell us just an inside scoop of what you're seeing, what they're really using the uh, corn for. Uh, so, as far as my research has gone, um, I've found that the vast majority of corn is used in either ethanol production mm -hmm. or uh, livestock production, um, like in the, the large confinement type operations. So basically using it to feed animals. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, ethanol. Or ethanol. Um, is there, what's your viewpoint on ethanol? Uh, I, don't, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but... Uh, Basically, from what I understand, it, it takes uh, so much more uh, energy to produce a lot less energy um, as an end an, product with the, the fuels. And something else that's also an issue in my mind is that we use an annual plant, so we have to plant it every year um, to get these fuels when there's a lot of other perennials that um, have been proven. They produce way more um, ethanol per unit of, of product, but also like per acre as well. What's a perennial and an annual? So an annual has to be planted every year. Its life cycle is a year long, and a perennial comes back every year, like say a grass in your yard comes back. Yeah. Uh, wow, so um, 
So now what about uh, being subsidized? Tell me about what, what happens with that. Is corn subsidized? Uh, yeah, the corn and soybeans both are. They have programs, and I can't tell you the ins and outs. I, I participated in them, but I was in a partnership with brothers, and I, I didn't actually take care of that part. Um, but yeah, there is there is subsidies to uh, to raise co both corn and soybeans. Okay. And then what what about soy? Is that also used to feed the livestock? Is that what they use it for? Uh, to my knowledge, that yeah, there is quite a bit there. I, in my research, um, I found that they use it a lot in fillers in human consumption. So we, we don't actually see that on the labels, as far as I can tell. But uh, right. yeah, so I, a lot of it is is also animal consumption. It's it's all over the. It's all it's basically in almost every food, like in in the certain aisles in the grocery store. And then you, uh, um, as they don't label it, of course, because they don't want you to know that it's GMO. But everyone knows it's GMO. Um, it costs so little to produce. Right. It's yeah. cheap, isn't it? Yeah. Which, to my understanding, that that's a big reason why they use it for a filler, is because we have so much of it, which makes me question: Are we overproducing? Because they're trying to find places to put all this stuff. <laughs> It's kind of a racket. Yeah. And then they have this thing called high fructose corn syrup, okay. which is not even sweet. It's actually a filler. And then you just drink your soda, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, okay, so now what about um, with Roundup Ready or whatever the chemicals that you spray, is how often do you, do you have to spray the ground first and then the plant, or how does it work? Um, so with the Roundup specifically, uh, you'll spray spray the plant, so it, it's a contact killer. Okay. Um, so, ideally, they don't only want to spray one time, um, so that you don't have to make two trips and across the field and and keep your costs down. But uh, there's quite a bit of issues in our area with uh, resistance to that chemical because of its overuse and maybe not responsible use. Uh, but there's weeds now that it won't even kill. Uh, they built up a resistance completely to it. So. Because you have the soil, which is it has this microflora, this all this bacteria that's supposed to be there. I'm sure that's probably killed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're going to get all these, just like in your body, if you have antibiotics, you're going to get yeast infections and fungal infections. I could imagine you're going to get that with this corn and soy. How, how about the seeds? Like, you have to buy the seeds, and you can you keep using them, use your own seeds, and plant it over and over? Or how does it work? Uh, no. Logic would tell you that you can save back seeds and, and plant them the next year. But uh, so you sign what they call a technology agreement. And uh, so at that point, um, you cannot save back any of the seed that you produce from the original seed. So yeah, you buy, you buy seed every year. Wow. Interesting. I have a nice little connection with that. Does GMO produce uh, more crop uh, than organic or non-GMO? Oh, that's a good question. So basically in my research um, with some red flags popping up on and questioning what I'm doing and, and the reasons and, and the effects, uh, we have ended up raising some more non-GMO crops, um, which to my understanding is, is a lot more human consumption versus animals and ethanol. Um, but um, the ye as far as the yields go, um, we have seen the same yields, if not better, um, in, in compared to non-GMO. So uh, no, I, I, in our experience, there's definitely not an advantage in yield. Wow, Interest, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, it just makes you start thinking things completely differently. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other question that I have is that. Uh, um, so we have a combination of the soil, the soil that gets destroyed, and then you have the farmer that's kind of almost like they're stuck in a, I guess, a, a little bit of a rut, right? Where they, they're in this machine that they're basically having to kind of a little bit forced to promote that. And then, um, I mean, can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, no, it, I think it, it definitely seems uh, like, a, like a hamster wheel in a sense. Um, so, you you know you can't you can't save back seed, um, 
with, which makes no sense. Um, and, and it's become widely accepted, um, surprisingly enough. But, uh, you know, you can't, you can't save back seeds. Um, you, you sell to your local, to your local elevator. And, and I guess they're more of a middleman, but as far as where the product goes, like you don't sell to the end user. Um, so you don't really have that control as far as selling. Um, you don't even really feel like it's yours because you're, si you're signing a, you're signing a way control, I guess, like, cause you can't even, you can't replant the product. You can't save back. Um, well, I just see this as stuck between a rock and a hard place because yeah. it's like you don't have the freedom to plant and sell who you want to. You're like just a middleman. Yeah. So you don't really see what's going on. So, wow, that's interesting. Well, thank you very much for that data. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool.